This programme looks at England's monarchs from the death of Queen Anne to the accession of Victoria. Well, Britain's monarchs, actually. And if you look at Europe at the start of this story in 1714, you'll see just what I mean. A European king is an absolute ruler. Louis XIV, Peter the Great, Philip V of Spain, Frederick William of Prussia, all men of unlimited power. It's not like that in Britain. Queen Anne has died. There are no Protestant Stuarts left. The Protestant line to the English throne now passes through James's granddaughter, Sophia, who had married a German prince with the title of Elector of Hanover, and then from her to her son, George Lewis, who's inherited that antiquated title. Into one quarter of the royal coat of arms pops the amazingly complicated device of a 54-year-old German princeling. When Walpole came with the news of his father's death, George II appears to have regarded it as a wind-up. That is one big lie. But the outcast prince was indeed now George II, by the grace of God, King of Great Britain, France and Ireland, Defender of the Faith, Elector of Hanover, Duke of Brunswick, Lüneburg and Duke of Celle. The would-be Charles III made a bizarre secret return to England in 1750 where he converted to Protestantism and expected this would encourage his supporters to have more hope. They were more impressed by his degree of attachment to the bottle, not so much the king over the water as the king under the table. King George was in no danger now. Prinny, as his friends called him, spent his time in gambling clubs, in the company of dandies like Beau Brummel, and put much energy into building the bizarre and spectacular pavilion in Brighton. That's where he was when he heard that the king was mentally ill, and he hurried off to Windsor to take over. 28 years old, he was going to be regent. <laughs> 